If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. What we'll do after reading the question is draw a picture that captures the information described. So initially the child and merry-go-round are rotating at a certain angular velocity and the child is standing only one meter from the center of the merry-go-round. But then he walks out to the edge and ends up being two meters from the center. And our task is to figure out what the new uh, angular speed is after the child moves out to the edge. Now in this question, we're going to be able to use the conservation of angular momentum. So let's take a look at that equation. So in the conservation of angular momentum, on the left-hand side of the equation, we have the total initial rotational inertia multiplied by the initial angular velocity. And that's going to be set equal to the total final rotational inertia multiplied by the final angular velocity. Now we say total because we have to take into account the rotational inertia of both the merry-go-round and the child. So let's substitute in an expression on the initial side of the equation that includes both the merry-go-round and the child, and then we'll do the same thing on the final side. So we've expanded the total rotational inertia into I sub child plus I sub merry-go-round. We used MGR to represent merry-go-round, and we did the same thing on the final side. Now it turns out that for the child, we can treat that child as a point object. Maybe not so nice for the child, but good for the physics. So it turns out that the rotational inertia of a point particle is equal to the mass of the particle times r squared. r would be the distance from that point particle, in this case the child, to the center of rotation of the merry-go-round. So we're going to make another substitution whereby we include, or we substitute, i child with m r squared. And so we're about to plug in, but one thing we want to do is solve the equation for what we're looking for. We're looking for the final angular speed, which is represented by omega sub f. So we want to divide both sides of the equation by this term in parentheses so that we can isolate omega final. So we've gone ahead and done that and then we're going to have to actually transform the initial angular velocity into radians per second because that's the standard unit. They've given it to us in revolutions per minute. So why don't we go off on the side for just a moment and convert the revolutions per minute into radians per second. We can write 14 revolutions over one minute we do know, of course, that one revolution is equivalent to two pi radians. And this way, the revolutions will cancel out. And of course, we also know one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. And so the minutes will cancel. Let's pick up our calculators and just compute this to see what the initial angular velocity is. It turns out to be approximately 1.466 radians per second. So that's going to be the initial angular velocity that we plug in here. We have the mass of the child, so we'll be able to plug that in. Remember that the r in the numerator is the initial distance from the center, which was one meter, and then the r in the denominator was two meters. And then finally, the rotational inertia of the merry-go-round was given to us as 275, and it's not changing. Note that it's not changing from the initial to the final scenario, so we're going to plug 275 in in both the numerator and the denominator of the I sub MGR. So we've gone ahead and plugged in all the known values, and when you work this all out, you should get approximately 1.17 radians per second as the final angular velocity of the system. Now, I called it angular velocity, but technically it's actually the angular speed since we're not concerned with the direction of this value. So we can just say that the angular speed is 1.17 radians per second. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel. Remember that you can send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to respond to it on YouTube.